Hello everyone, and welcome to my engine tutorial. That's right, I'm going to be discussing every power source in the game in a single video. I'll break down the pros and cons of each type of engine, as well as the basics you need to build them. Also, you can look in the description for workshop links to good engine collections in case you want to expand your knowledge and your repertoire of prefabs by basically reverse engineering what you find. As usual, chapters and timestamps down below. So, before we get into the specifics, here are the main variables that define an engine. Power per volume, or PPV, is super important for any vehicle that is going to enter combat. Basically, it describes how much power you get for the space your engine occupies. For example, a 50 PPV engine will require 100 blocks to produce 5000 power, whereas a 25 PPV engine will take 200 blocks. The next big factor is power per material, or PPM. When people talk about efficiency, they're usually referring to this. The higher this number, the less resources you're consuming to produce a given amount of power. For example, an engine that produces 1000 power at 350 ppm will consume twice the resources as a 1000 power engine with 700 ppm. For the sake of demonstration, the vehicles I use in my Very Hard Neater campaign use relatively low to medium efficiency engines. The reason for this is that PPV usually goes down more or less proportionally as PPM goes up. As such, efficiency comes at the cost of space. That said, I wouldn't go as far as saying that efficiency doesn't matter either. Most engines will require material or fuel storage to run, and lower efficiency means you need more storage, which indirectly drives down the real PPV of a lower efficiency engine. The longer you want it to be able to run without resupplying the vehicle because you'll need that much more storage to sustain the vehicle for that period of time. Finally, the form factor of an engine matters to some extent, especially if you care about aesthetics. Depending on how much armor you want and the minimum size of your engine, your vehicle will also have a minimum size, which may or may not fit the shape you were hoping for. Now, for the actual engine breakdown, I'm going to start with the electric engine, because it is by far the simplest engine to build. So, you go into the menu in the resources and place some batteries. Each battery will increase the maximum output by 90. And then, you place the electric engine block. And you're done! This means that electric engines can never quite get their PPV to 90, and their efficiency is determined by whatever you use to recharge them. And that's the main problem with electric engines. They can't recharge on their own, and the maximum output will drop steadily as the batteries drain. This can be worked around to some extent by having more batteries than you need and then transferring some energy from another vehicle. There's also very little reason to use electric engines in combination with other engines on the same vehicle, because you could just use those to provide the power instead. The exception to this is if your vehicle uses particle accelerators or railguns, since those draw the power directly from batteries. Which then means you only need to add one extra block to your battery bank to turn them into a backup engine, for example. Finally, you can use electric engines to transform RTG energy into engine power, but this will drop your PPV just below 13, and it is very expensive. Next in terms of simplicity would be the custom jet engine generators. Building them is also quite easy, and in case you don't know how to build them, here are the basics. Intakes are optional, but grant a huge improvement to efficiency if they are unobstructed. They only need 8 meters of clearance in front of them, and only in front of the center block if you are using a 3x3, and can potentially be piped for convenience as well. Similarly, the exhaust block is also optional, but grants a, an overall bonus, a multiplier. The exhaust only requires clearance if you also want to generate thrust, but you can also pipe it if you want. Do note that CJEs do not function at all if submerged, so they can't really be used on submarines, and they will need to be piped to above the surface for use on ships. 
the rest of CJEs can be made as short or as long as you want. Compressors and compressor add-ons increase efficiency. And combustors, combustor add-ons, and fuel injectors increase the power produced. Somewhere between those blocks, you will need a controller. And then to turn that into a power source, all you need to do is the actual generator block. You will probably want to place it next to the controller since losing either of those will kill them as a power source, meaning they are both very important to protect. Finally, you can tweak the amount of the thrust that the CJE can use, or rather it will reserve for power production using this interface, as well as switching between engine power and energy. Other things worth mentioning about CJEs is that they draw directly from the fuel storage. If you don't have enough, they will choke. And you can check the V menu right here to see how much is available and if you have enough. Unsurprisingly, much like CJEs, fuel engines use fuel. Hey. Fuel engines are quite a significant jump in complexity because they have subcategories. You have injectors, turbos, and superchargers. You can somewhat combine them, and you could argue that pure carburetors are another subtype of fuel engine, but hybrids and pure carburetor engines are more difficult to build and kind of niche in that they don't really get better stats. Generally speaking, injectors have high PPV and low PPM. Superchargers are pretty much the opposite, low PPV and high PPM, and turbos are somewhere in the middle. It's also worth noting that injectors and superchargers are more efficient at lower loads, but less power dense or lower PPV, while turbos are just worse across the board as demand decreases. Now, generally, regardless of the type of fuel engine you want, everything will start with the fuel generator block. You can put a cylinder straight on it, but only one because there is only one attachment point. So you'll usually want a crankshaft. You can also attach an adapter to the crankshaft, but you can't attach an adapter to another adapter. And then you can put your cylinders either straight on the crankshaft or on the adapter. For an injector engine, the injector block has two attachment points and at least one has to connect to a cylinder. While it's possible to create injector engine without exhausts, I really wouldn't recommend it because their stats are generally horrible. Thus, the next step is to add exhausts. And the more exhaust pipes you connect to a cylinder, the better the cooling will be and the more efficient it's gonna be. You also don't have to exhaust uh, to vent the exhaust externally, but there is a significant penalty if you don't. You could also use radiators to cool the engines, but note that those are really heavy and they are somewhat expensive compared to exhausts. For superchargers, you'll need to place a carburetor next to a cylinder. And yes, carburetors can benefit multiple cylinders. As you can see right here, the tooltip says cylinders attached to. Then it's just a matter of placing the actual supercharger block on the carburetors. Note that supercharger engines should have their maximum RPM limited in most cases, since they do not perform well at higher loads. And the upper limit will usually be roughly 70%. The actual limit you should choose will depend on how you want to balance the PPV versus PPM. Because superchargers usually run best at lower loads, exhaust can also often be replaced with radiators, which also has the benefit of freeing up space near the cylinders for potentially more carburetors. For turbos, you will also require carburetors. The white part of the turbo block itself needs to attach to a carburetor, similar to what you see here while the dark part will consume exhaust either from a pipe or directly from the cylinder to increase the output and the efficiency. The other port on the dark part also needs to vent somewhere, anywhere, but it needs to be vented. Piping more exhaust into a single turbo has diminishing returns, so it's also generally better 
to run turbos in parallel rather than in series. That said, the amount of exhaust is still important, which is why turbos are just worse than other engines at lower lows. Finally, for generating energy instead of engine power, you can tweak the maximum battery charge setting or the battery charge fraction. All this setting does is restrict how much of the engine power can be converted to engine. This means that the engine can always provide straight engine power, even if the setting goes up to 100%. If you go into the power priority screen on the V menu, you will see your engine both as a power creator and as a user. Changing the priority for power creation simply lets you pick which engine responds to demand first. The interesting part that is unique to fuel engines is how they are also listed as a power user. If you set certain things to be higher priority users than your fuel engines, then your engines will provide engine power to those things first and only use whatever is left over to charge your batteries even if you set the battery charge fraction to 100%. Finally, steam engines. Steam engines use materials directly and their complexity is similar to fuel engines. Your main choices are between turbines and pistons. But you can also combine both, like this, and pistons by themselves have quite a bit of variety. In every case, you will need to build boilers and attach a same size controller to each boiler line. And then you can pipe steam into all sorts of turbines or piston arrangements. Turbines produce energy only, which means you'll require electric engines if you want to turn it back into engine power. This is not ideal for a few reasons. Compared to piston engines, turbines tend to be just worse across the board at low to medium efficiency. On top of that, the need for batteries to convert the energy means they have indirectly even less PPV. However, if you aim for a high efficiency, then turbines become quite competitive. This happens around 750 ppm or so and above, and it's even better if you're using particle accelerators or railguns to draw the energy directly from the batteries. In terms of the turbine itself, there is a minimum size to be able to convert a certain amount of steam. For example, if you look at the tooltip, this turbine can only handle 500 steam per second, and the boiler, well, it can put out 4,500 per second. Now you can keep increasing the turbine size past the minimum requirement, and doing so will generally reduce the PPV, but it will increase the PPM up to a point. You can play around with the ratio of boilers to turbines to get the balance of PPV and PPM you want. Now, piston engines are created by pumping steam into the back of a piston block that is then attached to a crankshaft which is itself connected to a gearbox. The other connection point you can see on pistons with the arrow pointing up is for the exhaust. There needs to be an empty space there or a pipe to route the exhaust somewhere where more steam will be consumed or vented. That's because pistons generate power based on the difference in pressure between the input and the output. For best results, the pressure inside the pipe going into the first set of pistons should be 10. So this example is actually not optimal. If you choose to leave the exhaust empty, you will get a relatively high PPV and low PPM engine. If you instead recycle the steam into either a turbine or another piston, you will lose PPV in favor for more PPM. Now, you can get quite creative with this. I would generally recommend to look at the in-game prefabs or those linked in the description for inspiration if you're not sure what a, air quotes, standard setup looks like, since some just won't perform as well as others. Note that you can put a wheel and a generator attached to the crankshaft of piston engines. 
This allows steam pistons to work similarly to fuel engines and switch more or less freely between engine power and energy production. Steam has a few other quirks. For instance, the small parts are actually very good. The main reason for upgrading to bigger parts is because they scale better. So the bigger your engine, the more likely that the larger parts will be worth it and yield better stats across the board. This is mostly due to the friction mechanics. The more turbines, pistons, crankshafts you have, the more friction your engine has to overcome. And that's partially a constant cost, as long as the engine is running. For that same reason, it's also better for efficiency to have more than one piston connected to each crankshaft. Generally speaking, two pistons will offer a good balance of convenience and efficiency, kind of like this. Putting more than two per crank can create shapes that are harder to work with and the extra piping you'll require kind of creates diminishing returns. Friction also means that running steam engines at anything less than 100% generally makes it worse in every way, similar to turbo engines. Finally, I should mention that you should always have an overwhelming demand for power on your vehicle when you're designing steam engines due to how the stats on the UI works. I suggest adding uh, maxed out shields and or ECM jammers with a low power priority, just to make sure you get an accurate picture of what your engine can actually do. And that's every engine. Don't forget to check the description for links to platforms with engines that you can copy or reverse engineer to your heart's content. Please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful. Leave a comment if you have more questions or suggestions for future videos. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.